good. Okay, eat resilience. Okay, good. Goans, Mozambique, Cape Verde, Angola. We're all over the world. Welcome. The first reader that we're going to have this evening, before I, I guess uh, you mentioned that Lynette will not be with us tonight. Uh, hopefully sometime in the future we'll do this again somewhere in California because uh, we are kind of focusing California navigations, focusing on California, uh, Portuguese in California. And uh, that is the focus theme for, for this evening. Uh, the first reader will be Tony John Roma, who immigrated in utero to California. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> From the island of Saint George. He grew up in San Leandro among the last great wave of Portuguese immigrants to the area. He graduated from Sacramento State, where he was a recipient of the Bazanella Literary Award for short fiction. Tony John Roma. Thank you for putting this together and bringing it together. Um, and I understand for getting it a special translation for me. I am not a poet. I will not be reading poetry. I'm reading prose. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it poetically, yes. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm just going to read a short scene from a story called Storm. After father died, we marched slowly from days of pronounced sadness into nights of reminiscence. Mother took a different path. She cried on the night of his death, and the following day resumed her steady course for duty, although more quietly and in the dark clothes of mourning. For weeks after the funeral, visitors returned from across the village with food and clothing and condolences whispered in our Portuguese. Mother served tea and cake and offered them dinner. This had always been her way with guests, and she made clear that current circumstances would not change. She was constantly up into the kitchen and back with more food or drink. One of my aunts or my sister Isabella would follow her out of the room to offer their help, and then return, whispering, she needs to rest, or she's pushing herself too hard. Our visitors, Often other women in black responded with a shrug and an outstretched pat on the knee. It's how she grieved, they said. Late in the evening after the guests had departed, Mother sat in the lamp-lit living room and kicked off her black shoes, stretched out her short round legs, and sighed with neither complaint nor joy in her voice. Mere dear, so many visitors. She sat with her eyes closed, sometimes quiet, sometimes humming, but she didn't say another word. She had always been a talkative woman, prone to gossip or flattery, but in the months after father's death, whether at home or on the church steps, her converse conversations consisted of few words. Father had been talkative too, but his conversations were full of tales and dreams, often humorous, finding delight in them <laughs> and escaping from it. Mother's talk of village news and rumors was earthbound and present. In this way, our parents were a balance of fancy and practicality. Father was slow-paced and imaginative, a man of considered and often original act 